Hi guys and welcome to my new video. Finally I found the chance and time to do something new for you. This video is the first of many new episodes uh, which I'm going to call Outdoors with Olympus and that time it's wildlife photography in the Swiss mountains. So of course it's about wildlife photography, about Olympus camera gear, about camera settings and what I did and experienced in the mountains. So if you like that then please stay with me. So I spent many days and weeks in the mountains, of course not together, but I traveled a lot and tried different locations because I had one particular image in my head and that was to photograph an ibex in a sunrise or in a sunset. And um, yeah, it's not that easy because sometimes you have the beautiful light, the perfect location and no animal, or you have the animal and the weather is not good um, or it's standing in the wrong position, but one day, one evening I succeed. It was a sunset, yeah maybe not the perfect sunset but I get it in the blue hour. So before I'm talking about hiking, what you should wear and um, how you should prepare of that and camera settings and stuff, let me show you some pictures what I did in the mountains. If you consider yourself going into the mountains or if you don't have any mountains and you just go hiking, then I would say what I do first all the time is to find a lot about, to find out a lot about the location where I want to go. So I check out the internet, how far can I drive with the car, um, how, how much I have to hike, um, is it the easy hike or a hard one, um, what time of the year is the best to go there and when it's maybe closed in the winter. Um, so prepare for that, it's even more important in the mountains than anywhere else. In terms of clothing, what I wear all the time is a shirt of course when I'm going to hike and a sweatshirt and a jacket. And that depends on time of the year, um, if it's cold I wear a winter jacket of course and otherwise I just use a windstopper because it can be very windy in the mountains. And Sometimes um, I think it's a good idea to take a second shirt with you because when you hike, and as me, I like to walk, um, yeah, let's say pretty fast, and then I start to sweat. And usually in the mountains high up, it's um, colder and it's a strong wind. So I usually take the sweaty shirt off and take a new one because I don't want to get a cold. And um, which, yeah, with the wet shirt can easily happen. And something that I really don't believe but I see it every time I see people hiking up the mountains with sneakers. And I think that's, this is so dangerous because one wet stone and you're walking down and it's, it's, you have no chance with sneakers and your ankles are not protected. Um, this is really bad. So please buy proper hiking shoes if you want to try to hike up on the mountain. It's really important. Um, you cannot get wet feet with these shoes. You can stand for a few seconds in the water um, or in the swamp, it doesn't matter. I always have dry feet and it protects my feet, my ankles. And what I always take with me is a headlight or lamp, headlamp, head torch. What is the right pronouncing? Let me know. I think headlight, whatever. I always take a headlight with me because yeah, I'm used to first of all, and if you're going to hike like me early in the morning, like getting up five o'clock or even earlier. You cannot do it without a light. So let's start with the camera gear, what I'm using. I had the AM1X with me, already attached to the 4050mm f2.8 Pro. And I had the AM1 Mark III attached with the 7-40mm 2.8 Pro. My most favorite lens at the moment um, when it comes to wildlife in mountains or just nature in the mountains is the 4050 millimeter um, which is in full frame 80 to 300 millimeter and yeah that's just a matter of taste but I'm not the wide angle shooter and um, because when I'm on top of the mountains your view is so huge 
and sometimes with the wide angle it can be a little bit distracting for your eye to find or it can be difficult to find a nice frame but that again that's a matter of taste i like to um, get just one thing of a mountain one little cliff or something and then when the sun shines through with the fog or whatever i like to frame something special particular when i'm on top of the mountains but um yeah matter of taste but at the moment 1450 for me in the mountains is perfect even if an animal is coming um, i'm not surprised i can do something even if i'm a little bit far away i can frame something with the animal together with the mountains which with the wide angle is sometimes not possible or not that easy which brings me to the next point. I want to talk about two images, what I did there. And actually the first one, that one um, with the Ibex in the blue hour, it's actually done with the wide angle lens. And I know I said before, I don't do it or uh, you shouldn't do it, but you know, I was spending there almost all day. I saw the Ibex far away. I was sitting there and I was just hoping that on that spot where I was on, on that hill, if the animal would come there, I would have the best possible frame with the wide angle lens. With the zoom lens, the 4050, I get a lot of animal, but less blue sky. But for my image that I was that I had in my head, um, I really want to have this this massive blue sky, blue hour time, and with the small ibex somewhere. And for that, the wide angle lens was perfect. I did it with 14 millimeters at f-stop 2.8. Why that? Because 2.8 is enough on a micro four thirds sensor for this kind of image. Because you have to balance this image in the evening, it's, it's low light, so I said, okay, I don't want to go higher than 200 or 400 ISO. So, and with f-stop 2.8 on a micro four thirds sensor, you're already at 5.6. So you have light of 2.8, but in terms of depth of field, you already have 5.6 and I believe for an image like that it's really enough. And the second image is that one. It's also blue hour um, but before the sunrise and I arrived at the top of the mountains about six o'clock and I saw this beautiful kind of blue colors and layers in the background that I just had to do it with the with the zoom lens with the 4050 millimeters because I just want to frame and get this layer so close to me as possible and it was it just looks like paint a painting for me it's incredible colors in that morning it was just absolutely um, amazing camera settings i use my camera in mode a that means i am changing the f-stop and the iso in wildlife photography i use the olympus system every lens wide open as possible for animals and just if I want to include more nature or more environments together with the animal, then I maybe I stop a little bit down. But as I said before, f2.8 is already 5.6 and f4 is f8. Usually that's enough for an animal portrait. And for the AF system, I'm using continuous AF um, without tracking. And most of the time I use one single AF point or the Pfeiffer group maybe. In terms of white balance and exposure metering, I leave everything as it is. That means I have the um, automatic white balance and the exposure metering on ESP. I'm not too lazy, but I want to be focused what is happening in front of my lens. If I experience something like a beautiful sunrise or the animal, I always want to be also experience the animal together with me and not just clicking and changing the menu and the settings all the time. This, this is not my way. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, we reached almost the end. Um, and usually if you have any questions about that video, about Olympus camera settings, um, gear, wildlife photography, Switzerland, mountains, whatever, just ask me in the comments. And it would be a big help for me if you would subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.